Okay, I've cast this one before, but I'm going to have you guys watch me. So this has six prongs on it, kind of a swirled shank. Uh, it's got a hole in the center. The hole might come out, it might not, but uh, that can easily be drilled out. So we're going we're gonna to cast this. So we'll set that down. We have our two halves here. We're going to use the half with the edge. We're going to take that and we're going to set it down. This has a half round, and the half round is going to slide through the hole, and you want to try and get it centered in there as close as you can, and I like to hold it with my finger through there so it stays in one place. So I'm just going to take the clay, push it in there. This is called red clay. Uh, it's a clay that I import, and then I finish mix, mixing it here in Tucson. It's very, very clay-like. We're going to... I don't really hammer this in. Some people, you can if you want. I just like to push it in. Make sure it's up over this edge here and you want to take scrape it off I'd like to keep this clean put the excess back in the container now we turn it over you can see here there's our half round that's gonna pop up just like that we set that aside then we have a little excess over here. I want to get rid of that. Clean this off because you want the two halves to stick together really well. Now we're going to take and we're going to telk this. You don't want to breathe this in. Some people use cornstarch. Some people use baby powder. I like the natural telk. It's just my preference. Just don't breathe it in. Okay, so now we have this pattern, and let's see, I'll just tilt it a little bit on the bottom. We're going to line it up so it drops down in the center, and we're just going to push it in, just like that. And if you kind of turn it to the side, you can see if it's straight up and down, and I, I did a pretty good job. Now we're going to take this side of the flask we're going to put it on make sure it's right in place and take a little more talc put it in there and again blow it off but don't breathe it and we're going to take our clay we're going to start pushing it in like that. Push it in there really good. Gonna need a little more. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to scrape this off. Just like that. And I like to take this Put it back in the container. I'm going to set that flat. While it's flat down on the, uh, the surface there, we're just going to pull it apart. Now we have our two halves. We're going to set that half to the side. We're going to work on this half. What I've done is I like this little paintbrush. It's got a nice little end on it. I find center. I push straight down, and when I hit the bottom, I turn it on the side, and I push it through. Now this is something you're going to learn, 
If you're pushing really hard like this and it lets loose, your hand's gonna run into this and you're gonna be really upset because you're gonna have to probably do it over. So it's better to do it on the side and then pull it back out like that. Now, I found that a little heavier or a little larger main sprue helps a great deal with this type of casting. So I have a larger piece of aluminum here and I'll put that right there in the center, push it down, I'll turn it on its side and push it through. Now what you don't ever want to do is push from this side going that way because it will leave, it'll peel up some of the clay and, and it'll be a mess on this side. So you don't want to do that. Then what you want to do, take your knife and cut around and we're going to create our sprue hole or our funnel. This is where the metal is going to get poured. We don't want to go all the way through, but you want it deep so that it, the metal goes right to the hole. Uh, sometimes people make them too much like a sink bowl and then the metal spins around, causes turbulence, and you don't get as good a casting. So turbulence you don't want. Come back over here, push it that way. I just let it drop through. And that kind of cleans that up and makes it nice and smooth. Okay. This is killer on the lower back. So I'm going to kind of do the splits here. So at this point, without touching these two sides, you want to take the end of the paintbrush and, and take these edges here and kind of round them. So you want the metal to come in with without having to hit an edge. Uh, when it hits an edge, it'll slow it down, it'll cause turbulence, uh, or it, it could break the edge off, and then you'll end up with a porosity of some sort in your casting. So that needs to be rounded. Now, you could, if you're really careful, say you want the shank to be a little bit thicker, you can come up to the top here and you can just push this in with the paintbrush. I also have, I make kind of a kit and it's got these different sized uh, aluminum rods. You can use those as well. But for the video, this, this is, seems to be working really well. There, so this side is actually done. We got the funnel, and this is all set up. So we're gonna set that aside, put it somewhere where you're not gonna knock into it. Stretch my back, okay. Now we got this side, and since this is a tube, you can kind of put your finger in there. Very carefully lift it straight up, just like that. You want to make sure that none of the clay got stuck in there, which it didn't. And you can see that's a really good impression in there. I'm just going to take it out of the camera for a minute so I can look at it closer. So I'm going to take my glasses off so I can see. If we take, I'll pull this up. If we take the little rod here, sometimes if it pulls up a little bit, you can push it down with the little rod very carefully. There we go. Okay, so next thing we do, another little piece there. All right, so 
course, now I got my glasses off and I can't see. So what we do is we have this tiny little rod here. And for some of these, you got to have some vents in them because the clay is a really high mesh and it doesn't breathe. So in each one of these prongs, we're going to push a hole through to the other side. I've been trying to figure out how to do this without adding the vents. And so far, I haven't been successful on all the pores. So until I nail it down exactly, which may never happen, but if it does, then we'll do another video. Okay, so that's all six. I kind of bumped it there. Get it in the picture, Craig. Okay, so that that's all done like that. You turn it over here. The next thing to do, this is very important, is you want to cup this on the back. We probably could have cupped it before adding the vents. Either way. I know you've never seen this before, but this is something I figured out. So now it's like a bowl almost. You got to make sure where the end of your prongs come at and that you don't go too deep. Okay. At that point, you take it up and you blow through it. You'll clear out those holes. And if you don't, Keep it in the camera. You can go through and clean them out again. I mean, you can see right through them. So, at that point, put my glasses on. Now, what we need to do is make a core. This is very easy to do. We have this tubing. And that goes down. And this clay is a little different. It's a different clay mix that I came up with. It gets pushed in there. Now most of the foundries would use something like sodium silicate and they make special cores, but I found for this that this seems to be working pretty good. So we Keep that separate from the other clay. And then the kit has a little rod like this. Push this out. Just like that. This comes back over. And that gets placed right there. You don't want to shove it in, you just want to set it in there like that. You want to check your channel here, make sure it's clean. Make sure you can see where the shank goes down on each side. Take your other side. Now you want to put these two together. Got to line up exactly right. And that is where we stop at this point. All right, we'll do another video soon. Thank you.